All right. So uh, one of my viewers, Rob Norman, how are you doing, Rob? Asked the question, uh, do you have any codes for programming the grid overlay in Material Q? Um, I have the app, but I'm struggling to do the to do the coding. Thanks in advance. So yeah, let's talk about this. So I don't know about the one that comes inherently in Apple. And I've talked to several people that have Apple devices and they say that when they use that grid, it slows down the gameplay. And I'm not 100% sure that using Material Q doesn't slow your gameplay down too, but it's at least worth the effort <laughs> because it is nice having these grids. So let's talk about the grid. So I posted in this, in this uh, right here, I posted the code that I used, but I wanted to walk through it because I made, I wrote this code and I just put a bunch of comment lines in there and then I kind of cleaned them up because I gave it to some friends. So once you get into Material Q, so I'm going to use, I'm going to look at this one golf clash, no center H lines. And what I want to do is I want to come in and I want to make a clone. And so now that's a copy of that. Let's, uh, let's call this our test subject. And we can save it. And now we have a new one that's test and it's the same exact one. So if you find, if you get one that you like and you want to make some modifications, you can make a clone of it. And so let's edit it. So the first thing in here on that I have on here is that please note any lines that start with the double. So if you got any any of these in your in here, those whatever the hell those are, forward leaning lines. <laughs> if you see any any line that starts off with those, then that's a comment a comment line. So color option. So I wanted I originally started off, and I've got this new pen thing, and I'm gonna see how it works. It works a little different. Let's pick that up. So let's see if I can still write it. Okay, I can't write it on the screen. So these these lines that are on here, anything that starts off with those. So the color coding, you can see where my green lines, I have it broken up into three different sections. I call this the wind line. So these are the wind lines. And you can set these up however you want. This is the center line. And then this bottom line that's down here. It's kind of hard to see with the keyboard that looks, this is your grid line. Okay, so this is the grid, this is your curl line, excuse me. This is your curl line. So I have, I have it set up where I've got wind lines, center line, and curl line. And this, the curl line is set up so that when the ball, if you've got a 100% curl club, like a rock, like a maxed out rock, but I, and it's right inside on a maxed out rock because the rock doesn't quite have 100 that the ball is completely outside of that last line on either side. And that's where that, that, those lines end. And then it's broke up into the center line here is at 50%. And the way that they do the thing is it's 50% from the center, right? You're going from the imaginary left-hand side to the imaginary right-hand side, and then they pick the center between those two spots. So that at that center, it's 50%. And then it goes up to 80 and it goes down to 20. <clears throat> and so you're in 10 and each segment's 10. So what you can do is I put in the, I put in very, at the very end of this code where the curl line stuff is, I put in a spare and you can make copies of that spare. And then that gives you, what you can do is you can place one. I, we played in a tournament not too long ago where I don't normally try and involve curl into a shot, but there was one of the par threes that you had to use curl. It, you have to use curl. <laughs> I mean, you're, you have to use curl on that. And so it's always hard to find like the spot. But what I did was I hit it perfect one day and got a hole in one. And I went back and watched that video and I looked at the spot because I record my own gameplay. You need to record your own gameplay. <laughs> I was able to go back and, and capture that spot and freeze frame it so that I could look on my grid and see exactly where I was. So from that point on, I didn't hit any more hole in ones, but I was super close because I could get right back to the same exact curl and I put a special line in there. And in the, in the program that I wrote here, that line is a fluorescent pink. So it's easy to see what I would recommend you do. If you play, if, if you're going up to a new tour and you're playing a new tour and there's some holes where you have to use curl, especially because you brought out a Marlin ball and you know that you don't have the side spin with that ball, but you want to bring a Marlin ball. 
and you have to add curl and you've hit it right one time, go back and watch and see where that curl was. And if that's a hold that you shoot all the time, put a special mark on here so that on your notes, especially if you use the notes that have a picture of each one of the holes, or if, you, if you're one of those people that remembers the holes by name, then you could put a blue mark on there so that when you're looking at your notes real quick, you see a, that blue mark on that hole, you know that you're using the blue line for curl. And you can change those and you might have, it's almost like being in an archery where you have your peg set up in your, for your sights. What you can do here is if you've got a bunch of holes that you're playing with a mark, those, those marks may not be helpful at all during a tournament because you're coming with much bigger balls. You don't have to use any side. Any ball. And that's the whole reason of bringing a two or a three side spin ball. But you could set it up so that if you're playing a tour consistently. So if you're playing tour eight and you wanted to take the time, it's a time, it's an investment in time, but you could go and you could find out and put marks on there so that when you're out there with your marlin you automatically know when i'm on hole when i'm on this hole i hit to that orange one right there and it gets me super close every time <laughs> so the curl line is super important i liked it separated from my center line so if we erase all this stuff i'm not sure how to erase everything instead of just going back cancel I'm trying to figure out how to use this. It, it, it's got it set up. There's got to be a way to clear the board. Display corner, that is not what it is. I guess I'm going to have to just erase them all. Look at all the marks that I made on that screen. I'll figure this out. <laughs> it's something new. All right, let's see if I can draw. Can I draw? Mm -hmm. Hold on. All right, so <clears throat> for the wind arrow, the wind arrow are these two little green dots up here. And what I was trying, what I was shooting for, what I, what I really wanted to have happen was for when the arrow is on my device, when the arrow is pointing away from me, and it's like this, I tried to put these little ticks so that they just encapsulated the outside of it. So as it's doing its wobble and it's going back and forth like this, I was giving myself something. Because what I found was when I had these lines really big or I had just a center line that I couldn't capture the wobble because I was trying to get it so fine tuned down here on the center line that I was like, it was almost like hypnotizing me down there in that little end. And I couldn't get it quite, you couldn't get it quite right. <laughs> and so you kept dinking around with it and you were wasting time. You're just trying to get there in the center. And I found that with the two little ticks on either side, it was easier for me to, to get it at least somewhat in the right direction. Sometimes I'll get viewers that'll comment that I was off a little bit and I don't get that very often, but I mean, sometimes I'm off, but I'm usually pretty close to being online, but those have helped me because before there would be times where like you would think of the line as being almost diagonal from here to here. So your target area up here is much broader. So the closer you can work these two together, the less of that little wobble you have down at the bottom of the cup. So I wanted to find some way here. So that may that way may not work for you. So if that way doesn't work for you in the in it, I put in in the code. Let's see if I can get rid of all these damn lines. Mm -hmm. So we can get to it next time. So I put in here. There's a vertical line and you can remove these two lines in front, the comment lines in front on the following two lines to activate it. And if you activate this, this activates, this puts, this puts other lines out there for you to be able to manipulate. It gives you some other options. I did it several different ways. I put one where I had the center line that went right through there, that vertical line that went right dead center through the flagpole. And then I also put a horizontal line there so that I had a crosshair. And I tried it several different ways and I put in some code here and then I just comment coded it out so that I, I wasn't using it, but I left it in there. So you can try out different stuff on it. 
and you'll have to move over. So the way that it works is some of the stuff is in BP and some of it's in percentage. And so depending on your device, you'll have to change some of these numbers. So only change one number at a time so that you can see how it responds and you can see which one's handling, you know, like where it moves you or what your uh, range is. Try and do your up and down. I usually try and do the up and down first and get the up and down so that it's right. And then try and level it in from the right to the left. But it won't matter either way. Just and then the center line grid, this whole center line, I only have one line down the middle. That's all I wanted. But I put in for a center line, there's a center line, the vertical line that we're seeing right here. And then I have an upper horizontal line and a low and a, and a mid horizontal line. And when I say, and so the upper horizontal line is where the ball is at rest on the field. So like when it spins around and it looks at the ball and the ball's at rest and it's you're getting that crosshairs, that's where when it's on the field. If you're using the mid one is where it's at rest on the tee. So when you pull up to the tee, it's at rest right there. And then the grid line for the curl line down here at the bottom, when you pull it into the pocket to take a shot and you're trying to sit right in the center and not rub up against any of the nubs, when you're right there in the dead center, is right dead center where from left to right, that line that's on there is dead center in the middle of the ball. So that when you're trying to judge curl, you can tell when you're, because one of the things about using a lot of curl is when you're using a lot of curl, you may tend when you're on that, like when you pull it way to the right, let's say we're doing right hand curl, you pull it way to the right, there's a tendency to pull up at the same time and you're actually short shooting the shot. And so the, you can tell when you're in overpower because you can pull it down in overpower and it'll start to shake. And so you can lift off a little bit and you can be down there towards overpower. So you can get to the bottom pretty easy. So a lot of times you'll see me where I'll come over all the way to the edge and I'll pull down to where I'm in power and then I'll let off because it's very easy to short shoot. But with this grid right here, you'll never short shoot again <laughs> because you can pull it all the way out to the edge and you can follow along that line and you know where to pull it. So I liked this combination. And when I first started, I had brighter colors. So they were very easy to see on the screen. They stood out like day glow, day glow pink. But I found that they were annoying and that they actually took away from, I, I couldn't see anything but them. So I made them colors that kind of blend in. So a lot of times when, even in the videos, when you're watching my gameplay, it they'll blend in and you won't even see that they're there. But on the in the areas that you need it, where you're taking those shots, when you're taking the shot, you can see it perfectly well. <laughs> and so it doesn't stand out, it doesn't get in the way. It's like any good tool. It's there when you need it, but you don't notice it that much. <laughs> All right, so that's a little bit on these grid lines. If you have any questions on it, just put, put uh, comments. I'll shoot this video and I'll put a uh, link in that other one as well. All right, thanks for watching.